we've already seen that when a neuron is in its resting state, there is a voltage difference across the membrane. And so in this, these diagrams right over here, this right over here is the membrane. That right over here is the membrane. This right over here is the inside of the neuron. And this right over here is the outside. That's the outside, and of course this is the outside. This is the outside as well. So if you had a voltmeter measuring the potential difference across the membrane, so if you took this, this voltage minus this voltage right over here, the voltage between this and that, you would get negative, let's say for the sake of argument, let's say it would measure, it would average about negative 70 millivolts. So this is in millivolts, negative 70. So that's negative 70, negative 70 millivolts. And I'll do it actually for both of these graphs. We're going to use both of these to describe slightly different, or actually quite different scenarios. And you could have another voltmeter out here in yellow, and that's a little further out, but that's also as that's also going to register negative 70 millivolts. Now let's make something interesting happen. Let's say that for some reason, let's say that the membrane becomes permeable to a sodium. So sodium just starts flooding through. It's going to flood through for two reasons. One, it is a positive ion. It's more positive on the outside than the inside, so positive charge will want to flood in. And the other reason why it'll want to flood in is because there's a higher concentration of sodium on the outside than on the inside. So just across its constant, just it'll just go down its concentration gradient. The reason why we have a higher concentration gradient on sodium on the outside than the inside, we've already seen, is because of the sodium potassium pump. But anyway, so you're going to have this increase. You're going to really have the spike and positive charge flowing in. And then what's what are going what's going to be the dynamic then inside the neuron? Well, if you have all this positive charge right over here, the other positive charge in the neuron is going to want to get away from it. It's going to want to get away from it. Other positive charge is going to want to get away from it. And so the positive charge is going, and this is not just in the rightward direction, it's really going to be in all directions. In all directions, the positive charge, they're going to want to get away from each other. So this one's going to move that way, and then that's going to make that one want to move that way, which is going to make that one want to move that way. So if we let some time pass, what's the voltage going to look like on this blue voltmeter? Well, after some time, because more and more positive charges are trying to get away from these other ones right over here, as the concentration of these positive charges spread out, you're going to see the voltage start to increase. You're going to see the voltage start to increase, and then as they fully get spread out, then it might return it might return to something of an equilibrium. And then as we, if we go a little bit further down the neuron, as we go a little bit further down the neuron, a little more time will pass before you see a voltage increase. But because this thing is just getting spread out across more and more distance, the, the effect is going to be more limited. You're not going to see as much of a bump in the voltage over here than you saw over here. And this type of spread of, I guess you could say, a signal is called electrotonic spread. Let me write that down. Electro, electrotonic spread. Or this is a spread of an electrotonic potential. Electrotonic potential. So there's a couple of characteristics here. One, it's passive. The, this part that we drew right here, this isn't the electrotonic spread. What happen, the electrotonic spread is what happens after that. Once you have this high concentration here, the fact that a, a few moments later you're going to have a higher concentration of positive charge here, and a few moments later a higher positive concentration here. This is a passive phenomenon. So this thing right over here, it is passive. And it also dissipates. The signal gets weaker and weaker the further and further you get out because this stuff just gets further and further spread out. So it's passive and it dissipates. And it dissipates. Now let's play out this scenario again, but let's also throw in some voltage gated ion channels right over here. So let's say this right over here that I'm drawing, let's say this is a voltage gated, let's say this is a voltage gated sodium channel. And this one right over here, so this is a sodium channel. Sodium channel. Let's say it opens, let's say it opens at negative 55 millivolts. So let's see, that would be right around, right around there. So that is when it opens at negative 55 millivolts. Let me draw that threshold there. And let's say it closes, let's say it closes at positive 40 millivolts. So it closes at positive 
40 millivolts. Right over there, I'm just trying to show the threshold. And let's say we also have some potassium. Let's say we have a potassium channel too. Right over here, right over here. And let's say, so this is a potassium channel. The infamous leaky potassium channels, which are the, the true reason why we have this voltage difference across, a, across the membrane. But this potassium channel, let's say it opens when this one closes. So it opens, just for the sake of argument, these aren't going to be the exact numbers, but to give you the idea, at positive 40 millivolts. And let's say it closes at negative, at negative 80 millivolts. So that one opens up here. And then it closes, and it closes, it closes down here. Now what is going to happen? Well, just like we saw before, so let's 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 just let's let our positive charge flood in here at the left side of our at the left side of this at the left side of this of this neuron, I guess we could say. And then because of electrotonic spread, you're going to have the a little bit later, you're going to have the potential between the potential across the membrane at this point is going to start to become less negative. The potential difference is going to become less negative, just like we saw right over here. So it's going to become less negative. But it's not just going to be a little bump and then go back down because what happens right when the potential hits negative 55 millivolts? Well, then it's going to trigger this, it's going to trigger the opening of this sodium channel. So this sodium channel is going to open because the voltage got high enough. And so you're going to have sodium flood in again. Sodium flood in again. And so what's that going to do? Well, that's going to spike up, spike up the voltage. So it's going to look something like that. It's going to keep flowing in, keep flowing, keep flowing in. The voltage is going to get more and more positive. Because remember, this is going to be flowing in for two reasons. One, there's just a there's just more charge, it's more positive outside than the inside. So it's going to go across a voltage gradient or go down the voltage gradient, but also the electro electropotential gradient. But also there's a higher concentration of sodium out here than there is in here because of the sodium potassium pump. And so it'll also want to go down its concentration gradient. So it's just going to keep flowing in even past the point at which you have uh, no electro, uh, no voltage gradient, but because of the concentration gradient, it's going to keep going. But then as you get to positive, positive 40 millivolts, this channel is going to close. So that's going to stop flooding in. And you also have the potassium channel opening. And the potassium channel, now you're more positive on the inside than the outside, at least locally right over here. And so now you're going to have this positive, positively charged potassium ions want to get out, want to get out from this, po from this positive environment. And so the voltage is going to get more and more negative. And it's going to go beyond neutral because potassium is going to want to go down not just not just its voltage gradient. It's going to do that while it's positive on the inside and negative on the outside, or more positive on the inside than it is on the outside. But there's also it'll also want to go down its concentration gradient. There's more there's a higher concentration of potassium on the inside than on the outside because of the sodium potassium pump. So it'll just keep the potassium will just keep going out and out and out and out. And then at negative 80 millivolts. The potassium channel closes, and then we can get back to we can get back to our equilibrium state. We could get back to our equilibrium state. Now, why is this interesting? Well, we had the electrotonic spread up to this point, but the signal would just keep dissipating and keep dissipating. If you get further, if you get far enough, it would be very hard to notice that signal. And so, what this essentially just did is it just boosted the signal again. It just boosted the signal, and now. A few moments later, if you were to measure, if you were to measure the potential difference, because these things are trying to get away from each other again. Once again, you have electrotonic spread. If you were, try, if you were to measure the potential difference at, across this yellow, uh, across the membrane where this yellow voltmeter is, then you're going to have so where that yellow one is. Before it had a, just a little dissipated bump here, but now it's going to have quite a nice. It's going to have quite a nice bump. And if you actually had another voltage gated channel right over here, then that would boost it again. And so this 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 kind of very active boosting of the of of the of the of the voltage, this is called an action potential. Action 
action potential. You could view this as the boosting of the signal. The signal spreading, electrotonic, electrotonic spread. Then you trigger a, a channel, a voltage-gated channel. Then that boosts the signal again. And as we'll see, the neuron uses a combination, just the way we described it here, in order to spread a signal, in order for, to have the signal spread, but in order to be also, in, in order to, obviously to, to spread passively, but then to boost it so that the signal can cover over long distances.